This is Expose UX, where startup founders seek help from user experience experts. When I saw that first screen, it didn't jump out to me really until you started explaining it. So it might be a little confusing as to what I can click on and what I can't. For the sake of their users, these founders place their egos aside. I don't think you've done your homework. I'm completely confused. Whether wireframes are fully launched, the experts help them advance their products. I'm your host, Richard Brevik. When I released my product, RivalSeek, over 30% of users were confused by it. I understood why, but didn't know how to fix it. That's when I turned to the experts, and now you can too. Let's meet them. Chelsea Maxwell is a senior UX designer for Project 202. James Helms is the director of experience design for Intuit. And Jeremy Johnson is the vice president of customer experience for Project 202. Special thanks to the User Experience Professionals Association, Dallas Chapter. And also to Big Design Conference, September 8th through 10th, 2016, in Dallas, Texas. Filmed on location in the co-working space Fort Work in the Alto 211 building. Welcome, Felix, to Expose UX. Could you provide us a little background on your company? Sure. Uh, our company, Mystical Basket, was formed uh, in Jacksonville, Florida after winning a local startup competition. Uh, Mystical service uh, enables uh, do-it-yourself arts and crafts enthusiasts purchase all project supplies, making it fast, easy, accurate, and hassle-free. We developed underlying technology that creates a transferable customizable, always ready to purchase shopping cards. Okay, great. Could you walk us through your product? Sure. So the main component is a page for viewing uh, kit content, starting from a project description page or finding something on Pinterest that they like and clicking on it and landing on this page. So in this situation, they land on a kit that allows them to uh, purchase everything that they need for it. So uh, this kit contains uh, all the components. We can quickly look uh, what's included in the kit. And with one click, uh, we can get it from Amazon. So here you have everything in the right quantities. You know that everything is complete. So uh, in addition to one-click purchase capability, we allow you to customize the kit. So in this situation, you can say that I want to create instead of one, round vase, I want to create two of them. So you can uh, change product quantity and you'll see that everything is updated. We can also say, let's say that uh, looking at this kit, I, I already have a round vase, so I don't need it. So I can remove it from, from a project, uh, from, a, from my shopping cart and it will end up uh, in this area that, uh, that lists all the items that are not included in the kit. If you see in the interface, this area lists everything that is included in the kit. This area includes everything that is not in the kit. So, so how do you surface the kits? How do you search and find the different kits? You have capability actually to, to exit through here, or you can go on the home page and we have basically an ability to browse for kits on our site. Do you most, most of your sales come through those bloggers pushing their kits or do they come to the home page and then they, they're browsing and finding kits? Most of our entries actually are coming through Pinterest, believe it or not. Okay. So most of our traffic. Is and they see that's Pinterest. the final kit they see displayed or the, the individual items that make up the kit? They see basically every kit uh, is composed of uh, basically some information about the kit, so visual information, description, and the kit content itself. Uh, if, if Blogger has instructions, we just provide a link to, to that uh, instruction set, or we allow somebody to create their own instructions. So you, you don't need to have a blog. Also, not, there are other situations where, let's say, uh, a kit requires a very specialized tool. This tool might be very expensive. So usually in this situation, for example, this is a kit to create a rotating game table. It requires a rotary kit uh, right here. It's, a, it's not a common tool, but probably you don't want to include it in the kit because 
If I don't have this tool, most likely I may not do this kit, but I need to know that it's not included and I can make a decision whether to make it or not. So I'm, I'm looking at a lot of really considered engineering. Um, what's unclear to me is uh, this, uh, I'm trying to figure out who this is for and, well, I mean, I know who it's for, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see if this, is, if this is an experience that would resonate with that person. I'm curious if you've done any sure. of sort of the, yeah, absolutely. the user sort of bouncing this off of people yeah. that use this product. Yeah, we, we have probably on the site close to thousands of kits here, thousands of kits here, and uh, there are, well, this technology is applicable to possibly multiple domains, as I mentioned. Uh, for DIY arts and crafts, so probably a prototypical person might be um, a woman 25 to 40 years old married with kids, for example. That might be an example. So we have a lot of uh, projects here for Felix, kids. it might be worth mentioning that this is just one vertical, correct? That's correct. Yeah, so correct. he actually has multiple versions of this for other industries and yeah. other use cases. So this yeah. is really just the technology, is that right. correct? That's correct. And so, in, so, yeah, I, I, so I love that. I'm, 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 I love that, that this is something that could be used multiple different places. From a user experience perspective, to, to be explicit for Mysticit, it feels like it needs to reflect a little bit more the audience that's coming to it. So it would be, you know, maybe it's visual design, maybe it's a little bit less, um, a, a little more hierarchy around what do you want me to do? So there's, you know, Everything is the same size here in that we've got sort of what the product is, the ability to sort of look at other alternatives, what the quantity is, what the price is, the ability to remove it. All of those are literally the same size. Okay. And, and what I'm thinking is, the recommendation is, okay. buy all this stuff. There's an exception path, which is, I have this thing. So that's, uh, the exception should feel like a different weight than the happy path. And okay. I, I think you're presenting uh, your, your average user with an awful lot of choice all at once. And it may be um, that you want to look at, you know, thinking about here's the recipe with all the things on it. Is there anything on that recipe that you don't want? Do you want to make this recipe in a double batch, a triple batch, a quadruple batch? All that functionality is here, but it's, but it's, it's very, functional it doesn't have the story that goes along with you know one container of you know a, a shopping basket full of stuff that's pre-populated that promise isn't it is, isn't illustrated well uh, we uh, we are actually on the second iteration of this in the first interface we had sort of fairly simple view where everything was linear and it was in or out and you can click or unclick it stays in place but you can see sir, where it's in and out. The problem for us was that the feedback that we got is it wasn't clear, because the list could be very long, and it wasn't clear to a user visually what's in and what's out, and plus we needed to present things, what's required, what's optional, uh, what's common household, and it was very confusing for them to see it in a single view. So what would you try to suggest to have sort of linear, still linear view and try to figure out different ways to present all this cognitive complexity or... I actually, I, I like the I like the side by side of these are the things that you're purchasing and these are the things that are also required but not, but you're not on the hook for right now. This is more about the fact that um, the, the quantity, the price, the remove, the label are all sort of... Uh, they're all kind of one gray. They all have sort of the same level of prioritization. Okay. So I have trouble with what's important to me right now in this moment. What do you want me to do? If this is about, is this about changing the quantity or is this about adding or removing things that I don't need? And so it may be that the first thing you want people to do is pick out the things that they don't need. The second thing you want them to do is figure out, or the first thing you want is how many of these do you want to make? And then based on that, then it's like, all right, here's your list. What of these things don't you have? You're sort of asking them to do all of it at nice. the same time. And I'm wondering if you, could, if you could pace the steps 
in sort of a more logical path yeah, and think it's about, a, it's a, you know, it's a possibility. You know, step one, step yeah. two, step three. Yeah, so kind of going off of that about the hierarchy of information. So even like right above, so before you, your, your main focus right now is like on the stuff that you're getting, right? And so I think that there's more of an emphasis on the like surrounding story behind that. So all your information about the time to complete, the skill level, these are all like super de-emphasized right now. Like I can barely read it from where I'm sitting. And that's gonna be really important for this particular audience that you're trying to reach out to. Like if I'm a mom building this with my kids, time to complete is super important important to me. Like, is it a rainy day after an activity or is this like, we're going to camp out all weekend and this is what we're going to get done. Um, so I think definitely adding some hierarchy of information in there, um, whether through like visual design or um, just changing the content itself would definitely uh, give me more of an idea of what I'm supposed to be doing on this page. Okay. And I think it'll impact conversion. I think that, I think that once, pe once people can size and contextually orient themselves to how long this is going to take and who's it for and all that kind of stuff, what the complexity is, they actually, uh, I, I, I think buy rate goes up because okay. um, all of that, you, you take all that, all those questions out of this and this, then the shopping experience becomes really relevant and, and I, think they, I think that brings it home. Jeremy, did you have something yeah, you wanted to I, Okay, yeah, I think it just depends on the audience. It's a very complex looking system and, and maybe you're, you're targeting more of these expert people, right? Like I would- Actually- uh, <laughs> Well, if I was a first timer, then this is very, this looks like a, almost like a back-end purchasing system than it does a consumer, right, easy to use website, right? And I think echoing both what we heard here, right, creating those categories, is this quick, is this, you know, adding the story to it, just a lot of the patterns that you're using are, are not things that you see in kind of normal kind of purchasing situations. But the technology is obviously very, very powerful. I think it's just focusing in on how, how, do, you, how do you remove the complexity, show it when necessary, right, but, but try to make it easy to use even for first timers and reveal as people become experts with the system, right? Okay. Felix, thank you, and I hope that the feedback has been helpful for you. Yeah, it's very valuable feedback. Appreciate right, your time. <laughs>